Greetings. I'm going to talk today a little bit about the logical scavenger hunt or the logic final project for the uh, this class. It's a pretty large project. It's 20% of your grade and it's worth 200 points. And essentially it's going to ask you to go out and find examples of what we've been learning in the class in the media, online, TV, etc. Um, you can find it online um, or TV but predominantly I'd rather you use things where you can actually cut it out, like a newspaper, or print off an online source, etc. You're going to find 40 examples of the things we've been learning about. They're worth 5 points each, so for a total of 200 points. And what you're going to do is you're going to find things like we learned about non-arguments. So, some of the examples of non-arguments are warnings, or simple statements of beliefs, loosely associated ideas, reports, expository passages. What you're going to do is it says here there's a minimum of four. What that means is I want you to go out and find at least four non-arguments. Now that minimum is also unique. You shouldn't if you shouldn't if you're gonna give me four, I want them to each be a different one. So you can have a warning, you can have a loosely associated idea, you can have a report, you can have an expository passage, but don't give me all of the same type. Give me four unique. Now it also has a maximum here, which what I'm going to do with the maximum is don't give me more than 8. If you give me more than 8, I'm not going to grade them. But if you give me 8, well there's only 7 in this category, so how are you going to give me 8 examples? In this case, as long as you have 4 different categories, I'll allow you to give at least 2 of each one. So you could give me 2 conditional statements, and you could give me 2 illustrations, and 2 expository passages, and 2 statements I believe. But don't give me all eight of the same thing. And don't give me three of them. Give me at most two and minimum of one and at least four unique ones. Okay? And you have to have at least four and maximum of eight. Now finding non arguments should be fairly simple. It's not really that hard. Um, the non arguments are things like uh, you know you know like simple statement of belief. You could go to the letters to the editor and find those. You could find that in um, you know, a letter to the editor, warning your piece of advice, people would say, you know, you need to repent and find Jesus, you know, or else you're going to have problems. That would be a warning or a piece of advice, a form of non-argument. Um, you could find reports of information in the newspaper in the forms of, like, crime reports or what happened at a meeting. You can find conditional statements embed embedded within those illustrations from your textbooks. Don't use another textbook. Don't use... Um, or you can use another textbook. Don't use our textbook. Don't look up in the logic book and find examples of these. I want you to find these examples. Don't use Wikipedia and type up warning or piece of advice and then use that entry. These need to come from media sources. You need to find these as you're exploring. You can use, you know, you can look at the textbook and find examples and then try to find, mimic that. But I don't want them to come from textbooks or exams or from Wikipedia entries or, you know, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy or something with these. I want them to be that, you know, from their own source. Deduction, five examples, you know, cases where you see using logic for relations. So-and-so is related to so-and-so, they're, so they're a brother. You know, you'll find that in the media. Um, arguments from scientific law, well, you know, the rule of this. Arguments from definition, well, that's the definition of this. Anytime you see somebody defining something, they're probably going to use some form of induction. Induction. You know, find five of those, maximum of ten. Appeal to qualified authority. You'll see a lot of those. You'll see a lot of arguments based on signs, causal reasoning, legal reasoning. Find a case in the paper. Evidentiary reasoning. You know, legal reasoning. Find a case where it's explaining why the Supreme Court made their decision. You can call that legal reasoning. Find an evidentiary reasoning. Find a crime case or a case story about some sort of uh, new research. That's some sort of evidentiary reason. Predictions. I'll give you an example of prediction. You can use it. Go to weather.com and say that's a prediction. Okay, that would be inductive. Then you have informal fallacies, minimum of 10, maximum of 20. Rules of inference. You can have a, uh, you have a minimum of 3 and maximum of 8. These are going to be more difficult. And then Formal fallacies, which were denying the NRC and affirming the consequence, I want you to give me at least one example of those. This is going to add up to 40. Now, if you know, you're going to have to have at least 10 fallacies of informal type, one formal, 
three rules of inference, five induction, five deduction, and four non-arguments. That adds up to 28, which means you can go with all the minimums, but then you're going to have to use two from certain categories. You're going to have to have two, you know, you're going to have to go above the minimum in a few. So you're going to have to find more than just the minimum in order for this to work. Now this just explains what I explained wrong, so I'm going to do that, so I'm going to skip that. The entire paper needs to be organized properly. I will, it's a 200 point paper, but I will potentially give you, like, if I think you have a good example, I'll give you five points. But if I then find a spelling or grammar error, I'm taking off a point. If you don't cite your source right, I'm going to take off at least one or two points. So everything needs to be properly cited. Actually, if you don't properly cite it, I might not count it. Because if I can't figure out where it came from, I potentially won't give you any credit. Um, but, uh, you know, you need, to, you need to, you know, if you need to take the time and check your spelling, check your grammar. And if you have problems, I will take points off even beyond, you know, even though you may have gotten full credit for the example, if you have a spelling and grammar error, I'll take a point off if I find it. Teaching your examples needs to be on its own sheet of paper. Don't give me two. If you have two that are using the same source, photocopy it, make a copy, and then do it on two different sheets. Don't give me, don't use more than one sheet. Use one sheet of paper, cut it to the key part, and don't go and put two on the same sheet. You want to paste your example to the paper or scan it and place it on a Word file and then, uh, you know, put your information. Highlight the key parts. You can highlight the key part with a highlighter or you can just sort of do what I just did there where you're highlighting it just with, you know, on screen. Then you'll want to put a headline style of the type. You're going to give the name, such as ad hominem. And then you're going to put the category right below it, not as big and you're going to put something like informal fallacies. Then you're going to give a definition and explain how it commits this problem. Make sure your answer, your explanation is grammatically correct. And then you're going to um, put the entire project either into one Word file and submit it to a Dropbox, or you can print it out and bring a physical copy to Parkland and put it in my mailbox. And I will get it during the finals week. You want to number all your pages. You can number your pages simply because, you know, you're going to be moving stuff around. Just go to the bottom of the page. Just go all the way to the bottom. Center. And then if this ends up being page, ah, this ends up being page 33 or 23, then just do that. Okay? Don't, don't bother to, um, you know, put the page numbers outside of it. It'd probably be better just to go down the bottom and enter in a page number manually before you print it. Give me a table of contents. Make sure to organize everything by category and give me a cover page with your name and type as much as possible. If you're doing it and you're turning a physical copy, you can handwrite some of this stuff, but I would suggest typing the main paragraph, but the rest of it can be handwritten, the page numbers, um, type up the citation, but part of it can be uh, handwritten. Just the bulk of it should be typed. And since you're turning it in electronically, then you probably should. Um, oh, you use MLA citation. Just as a note, there's a website, www, I'm not actually, it's just OWL, which stands for online writing lab, dot English, dot Purdue, dot edu. It's a Purdue University's online writing lab. It's OWL, o -W -L, dot English, dot Purdue, dot edu. If you go to this site, if you go to this site, it will give you how to cite things using MLA. Go there and use that citation and make sure to put the proper citation at the bottom of each entry. Now, as I said, I want it organized by category. So if you have non-arguments, I want them all in order. And then you don't have, it doesesn't matter the order within the category, but you know, if you have simple statements of belief here, don't put one here and then another one down here. Put them in order. Group them. And group all the non-arguments together and make sure the page number so goes page one, two, three, four. And your table of contents needs to be in order. Then deduction. Group those all together. Group all your induction together. Group your fallacies together, etc., etc. And then what you're going to do is what example looks like is you start off, as I said, kind of a headline style, just bold centered the name. It's a false cause. It's an informal fallacy. And then you explain it. A false cause is an informal logical fallacy in which 
and you explain it. And then it says, in this case, David Dacre uses it by saying blah, blah, blah. What he's doing, Dacre's doing, is he's suggesting that certain candidates were elected because they people wanted to vote for him because they had a certain position. In this case, people may not have voted for them because of their position on this issue he has in mind. And so it's a bit of a false cause to suggest their election is evidence of the, the voter's intent. And then cite it at the bottom using the MLA format. And then at the very bottom, give us the page number. And that page number, 33, is a false cause. And it should correspond to your table of contents. And that's all you have to do. I'm going to explain in the next video a little bit just how to use the just a few technical things. Okay? Thank you and have a good day.